Hi all, Mass Bankov from Kaiser Polytronics here. Today we're taking a look at this pretty special mobile X-ray inverter system. Now I only have the X-ray high voltage tank inverter part here because this unit was simply too heavy and also a bit too old to actually bring the whole unit home. And it was missing all its uh, yeah, cabinet enclosure and a few other parts. But I took out the main inverter here and that still weighs something like, I don't know, 40, 50 kilograms. So plenty of good hardware to take a look at here. So let's get this torn apart. From the input filter side, we can quickly round up through the main contactor here. And we can see that the big transistor bricks sitting in here, which looks like they are the size of a CM600. Well, they are not exactly mounted on a heatsink, but just a part of the metal chassis. Now, over on the other side, we have the driver boards and we have some discharge boards on top there. But we can also see here that there is a lot of capacitors, maybe rectifiers and doctors and stuff below the large switches here. So uh, yeah, let's get that taken apart. It is quite a large setup we have here. We have a main isolation transformer, or at least that is uh, the control voltages, I guess, because we do have the main power supply down here through the load filter. We have the three-phase mains connected over down here from these three wires. Seems like it actually is two-phased plus neutral, as it is only two of them going through this mains contactor. And then they disappear up under the whole assembly here. So we will see about that later. But uh, that also tells us that we have the diode, re diode rectifier sitting underneath here. We have a uh, DC bus choke sitting on top here. And we have the charge and discharge monitors. One for each pair of electrolytic capacitors sitting on each other's side. And we have some aluminum bus bar, or is that actually feels like aluminum, um, going between the two switches. And then we have TPM drive boards, one for each side. And as we can see here, that is a 115 volt AC to 24 volt AC. So um, quite interesting how that is. I'm getting the feeling that this is not IGBT bricks sitting down here, despite being very large. And as I can see here, Mitsubishi Electric Electronics, Mitsubishi Corporation. I feel that this is um, large transistors and not IGBT bricks. That would be a shame, but from the age of this, it could be. So let's uh, get this taken apart, top off, uh, and seems like we have to dismount the whole chassis down here when we want to look at the uh, rectifier bridge. A little funny feature on this is that uh, so far the negative rail have been grounded all the way through the stages, also with these standoffs up to the DC choke, but also down to the negative bus bar and onto the whole chassis. So that's only this part, and that's why this is standing on isolated standoffs against the whole base plate. So this whole thing is actually a mm, probably midpoint uh, grounded which is not uncommon in x-ray systems where you midpoint ground to the high voltage uh, simply to make the high voltage transformer design more simple that you can have the half the insulation thickness. Let's uh, get these uh, driver boards off and there's really something with the this pinout that tells me um, this is not just a common um, module. It has way too many legs on the large bricks here. And we can also, let's see, get this off. What does it say? It says caution high voltage. Okay, so that has one, two, three, four, five, two times five pins marked P and N. And um, yeah, interesting. Really interesting. 
So now we have it here, the sticker PM300 DSA120, which is a Mitsubishi Power Module 300. It's not the CM300, which is a half bridge IDPG brick. This is the exact same brick, except it has driver modules built in. So this is actually a driver interface with some protection, which we actually don't like if we like to overdrive IGPT bricks for the sake of using them in high power Tesla coil inverters. So on that note, that is quite um, quite a bummer. Would have been nice to get two large CM300s for free. It's not like um, this even has a lid that can be taken off. It's all uh, potted, casted, epoxy cast uh, chassis. Uh, but if you do like to check out my video on uh, bypassing the uh, current limiter of a CM600 brick, I do have a video on that, so um, check out my playlists for that. As you can see here, a uh, PM300 DSA120. Quite a uh, large brick, uh, really tells me this is an uh, older date. Oh, perhaps we can take it apart from the uh, bottom side. Yeah, not too sure about uh, how these go through the chassis, but I will also have to bend these up uh, in order to get them down and we have all the goo. Yeah, I'm not too sure that's uh, a viable option. So um, let's just say that's a funny find and put them to the side. And what do we have here on the back of it? A sticker, of course. So let's just get a closer look at that. Let's see what it says. See, it's a power module, 13th of September, 1997. So, um, yeah, we can see maybe 2010, this is what was last serviced. So, yeah, maybe uh, some 12 years ago and it's thrown out. Makes some good sense. But it was manufactured in 1997, and being in 2023, that's uh, some good 25, 26 years. Now that I have dismounted the whole base plate here, it should come loose. Okay, we have some ground wires there. Let's just get those cut off. So we only have the line filter still on the base plate. The way that goes. And here we have what says input rectifier. So uh, I think we can expect to find a three phased rectifier here, or still what I think was the neutral, but it does say AC1, 2, and 3 here. So I'm still a little puzzled by the whole power input section. Semicron SKKD 40 F10. Seems like a double diode, so that is a three phased full bridge rectifier we have here. So uh, let's get this taken completely apart. It's all taken apart, and uh, what I did wonder about this rectifier board, which has all these uh, nice uh, Vima 0.74 MKP capacitors, fast and DC, uh, was that uh, it only had the, the two white wires for the DC bus connected over here, but that's because underneath it has reinforced copper bars. Um, yeah, so that's actually just a two layer board, because on the other side we could see that there were no connections between the outputs. So just a funny thing there. Now that's uh, of course uh, three nice uh, modules sitting here, directly uh, usable. So uh, those are very nice. Now this is the um, connector over to the high voltage transformer. And there's this uh, thin wire that uh, sticks out on both uh, sides, but I could not 
get it pulled through. And that's because this is a metal reinforced flexible hose. So that's actually the grounding of the hose that goes out here and here. And the reason why it's not yellow and green for grounding is because this whole chassis standing on these standoffs were floating at the midpoint level of the high voltage transformer. And what we have here is uh, the um, a current or that's hardly an, an inductor that, that here. That is to slow down the, um, the pulse of course. But that is just a wire around a form. There's nothing in there. So let's just uh, take that or open that up. So we can see here that it is just wire around a cardboard form. And we have a capacitor here. Let's see what this says. Say 10 microfarads, non PCBs, made in USA from Runken. Um, so that is, of course, the capacitor in series with the primary to drive it off resonance in order to uh, adjust the power output. The DC bus uh, capacitance, four of these Trobo. 3,700 microfarads at 450 volt DC. Not too sure um, how well these stand off to uh, their capacitance rating. Probably worn out over the years. Just take a look at the uh, PM300 IDPT brick again with the um, connectors up here. Funny module, never seen that before. And we have the charge and a discharge monitor. So it seems to have a IRF 840 MOSFET, an isolator, a LED for indication of high voltage presence on the DC bus. So very nice little board that can be reused just as is. DC bus also has these nice PMB 1000 volt 2 microfarad Snapper capacitors, always uh, a use for those. And it was indeed aluminum bus bar. Also uh, not bad, can also be uh, repurposed. And the mains contactor, let's see, oh it's marked in horsepower. Maybe they should just write what that's supposed to be in KVA or kilowatt or amps, something we can all understand, that would be nice. And then this, there is of course the large, large transformer here. Not too sure about the voltages, but at least it has some nice terminals, so it's easy to just plug it in and, uh, and measure. But it does have this nice little uh, board with the rectifier on, which says LUX board. So uh, that probably um, has input connectors to all the different locks of the X-ray system. So in order to even power it up, all the locks would have to be in place first. So a quite a simple safety circuit, as there has really been no safety relay in this power part. But that's probably in the control board section that I unfortunately only have some pictures of. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. It was a little yeah, all over the place, a bit hard to take apart and show you all the weird details as everything was mounted in all the different places and upside down. But I think we got to see some very nice small features and ingenuity and also some new different power modules. So uh, overall I'm very satisfied and I hope you are and if you're satisfied with this video then please share it. And then all I will say is until next time, see ya!